to remember is it spring forward. Spring back. Fall back. Fall forward. No. Like that. <laughs> what is your preferred gravy consistency? I don't know how I would answer that one. Right? Well, do you like it runny or do you like it not runny? What motivates me? Um, <laughs> just want to be the best at everything I do. I think you get to be a bit crazy to, to write a sphere, like definitely. Sphere definitely makes it, you know, what it is. You're racing a 500cc bike with no brakes, right? You can be paralysed, you can die, you can break bones, you can tear ligaments. There's all these list of things that you can do, and you just got to accept that. Anyone that thinks, oh, what about this, what about that, just, I don't think they should be on a bike. School for me was tough. Um, you know, I wasn't the smartest, smartest kid in my school, and, uh, yeah, it just got harder as the years went on. Pretty much every teacher said I was going to be nothing and just proved them all wrong, which was great. The attraction of becoming a spear rider was just purely, it was just a new challenge. I was 12 at the time, so I was looking for a new challenge when I was 12. So. My parents, they never like bigged me up or anything. They were always, you know, they always underestimated and, you know, anything that was better was awesome. You know, we're, we're there to enjoy it and, and, and race a bike. You start the season, this is the best job in the world. And then you get to about September or October, and you think, man, I hate this job. <laughs> There's no other sportsmen that like do what we do. It's so relentless and flying and traveling and driving. It's just like, it does run you down. It does make it hard, but you, know, you just gotta keep pushing and you know, get through it and do the best you can, really. Racing Grand Prix Saturday, Poland, Sunday, England, Monday, Sweden, Tuesday, back to England for some more league racing for the rest of the week. It's just, it's just hectic, you know. Racing's my life, and, and training's my life in the winter. And you know, there's a, a lot of people my age that are probably going to university or something, you know, trying to get a degree. And there's me racing the road bike for them. I strive to be better than, than everyone at everything I do. I'm getting paid to do something that I love. It's, it's one of the best feelings in the world. At the end of the day, you could have a life, so this is my life. Surrounded by champions every day certainly uh, gives you a bit of motivation to get out of the bed and uh, put all the effort in the gym. Because we're all at quite a high level in our own, own sports and we're all good friends and push each other off it so it's, uh, you know, it's great days like today are mega and hopefully it can spill us all, all on to good things this year. Yeah, great session here with Kirk and the boys. Um, you know, I think Kirk's one of the best in the business. He, um, He's definitely pushing us all hard. They've got to do it with the mindset that that guy who you're racing against next week or week after is working just as hard as you right now. So what are you going to do that's different to him? There's a lot up here, you know, it's a lot mental and I know for a fact no one else is doing it. So it's, it's what it's all about. This is giving me an edge that I know nobody else has got. Ain't no one going to be better prepared than them. It's as simple as that. Everybody's out there to do one thing and, and one thing only, and that's become world champion.
After getting a wild card for the 2013 season, I looked at it as a second chance. I just wanted to do every single thing that I could. In my eyes, I didn't want to be another rider that just got a wild card year in, year out. So just made everything happen and, and it worked. You can see that Ty was a different person from what he was some years before when he came in as a as a young pup, so to speak. And um, you know, you can see the difference in his in his, his attitude and his preparation. All of a sudden, he's realised that if I get a business head on, if I get a fitness head on, you know, if I suddenly now take this really seriously, let's give it a real push and see what I can achieve. The mental side of things, the speedway is massive. You've got to be confident all the time. We all can get around on the bike, no worries. It's just who's the strongest sort of guy in the head and can be the calmest under pressure and all that kind of thing, so it's uh, it all weighs up in the end. Prague was a, a key point in my season. Winning the first one was a, was a, was a, was a good boost. And when you're winning races, you know, everything is sweet. The speedway is probably 50 plus percent uh, mental than it is anything else. This is Speedway out of the top draw. Woffenden now pushing Pearson hard. Here comes Woffenden up the inside. <laughs> what a race that was! Unbelievable. And that night when he got his first Grand Prix win was an amazing occasion and that I think was the real moment. Ty Woffenden of Great Britain, he's going to win his first ever Grand Prix, what a story! I think that really tipped the scales for him. When you win one for any rider in the game like that, it's uh, the, the instant belief that I can do this. He won the GP in Prague I think, then everyone sort of went, wow, he's, you've got to watch him. <laughs> Racing at the Millennium Stadium, it's the biggest meeting of my life. The atmosphere is amazing, it always is at Cardiff. I had a massive crash, broke my collarbone, um, and that was me done for the night. Oh, drama! And that is a nasty, nasty crash! What was it has landed heavily? As soon as I hit the ground, um, I know I broke it, and I was just laid there, and I was I was devastated. You know, uh, all the hard work had gone in. And I thought that was my season over. I just sat on the track, holding my shoulder, just thinking about it. There was tears, knowing everything you've put in can just be just gone like that. He was absolutely determined to come back, uh, and we just saw what a brave young man he is. Most surgeons say six weeks for a collarbone. I told him I was I wanted to be back two weeks later. He said, Yeah, let's 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 go for it. It was sore, but you know, it was just something that you had to deal with and, and grit your teeth and get on with it. What a performance from Ty Woffington! Fabulous ride from Ty Woffington, got to give him an awful lot of respect. He broke my collarbone and everyone was probably rubbing their hands thinking, oh, he's out now, so that's one less person to worry about. But um, yeah, that, that wasn't the case and uh, you know, I proved to everyone that when, when times are tough, I can pull through. I could see he had mental strength as well as physical strength, but uh, that mental strength was, uh, was pretty impressive. He was just on that roll and he um, just went from strength to strength. And it's not very often that we've been able to say that a British rider leads the world championship. It was like a horse in the Grand National timing his run to perfection down in the final furlong. I was there to, to do my job and week in, week out I was doing it and, and that's what it's all about, hard work and, and determination and, and believing in yourself. Had another massive crash and another broken collarbone. Yeah, just sat there and uh, you know just said, you know, this is this is one time you you've got to dig deep and make it happen. You've got a world championship you can win. You've got this far. You've put everything into it. You know, don't let anything stop you now. I knew that if the doctor knew it was broken, um, he could have pulled me out of the meeting. So I actually told him it was my arm that was hurting inside. I was gritting my teeth and shouting at myself. He, he gave me the all clear and 
we went and did some more racing. <laughs> I look back at it now and I think, what an, what an idiot riding with a broken collarbone, but I'm sad he now as world champion, so there's the other side to it as well. Just part and parcel of this remarkable journey, it does make a, a fantastic story. I don't even know how to explain it. Ty Woffington is going to come round to take the jack and flag. Great Britain has a world speedway champion for the first time in 13 years. What a fairy tale it is. It was something I used to dream about when I was a kid and your dreams coming true. It's just out of this world. Everything that he did that year seemed to work for him and um... You know, when you get on that run, it's, it feels really good and you don't want to come off it, you just want to keep going and going and going. Everyone said I was at Sun Kenya, yeah, I'm just like, nah, don't know if it ever will. There are a lot of people, of course, um, who are talking about you as the as the next great talent, the next great hope, hope for Great Britain. Um, you're obviously aware of all that and all the hype and uh, that, that, that surrounds all that. Do you just have to let that sort of go over your go over your head, if you like? Yeah, definitely. You know, you see a lot of people that that, that goes straight to their head, and and it probably make, messes them up more. And because I've seen that happen to people, you know, that's definitely one thing that I don't want to happen to me. So. You know, I obviously understand what people are saying and I appreciate what people are thinking and uh, you know, hopefully I hope they'll prove them right and uh, just got to keep trying really. You are still only 17 uh, but there's such a massive media hype around you, you've got so many supporters already. How do you cope with that pressure? Yeah, no, the pressure's nothing really, I just don't think about it and uh, you know, just go out there and do my job. Since I've become world champion, I've had a, a lot of media. It's uh, it's been pretty pretty hectic. You still pretty grounded? Do you feel? Or has this changed you? Do you think? No, it hasn't changed me at all. Um, yeah, obviously it's, I've, I've won a world championship and a lot of people do change, but you know, it's, um, <clears throat> it's only going to help me in the future if I keep doing what I've been doing my whole career. The image that he has as well is great for youngsters. I think he's captured the imagination of a lot of youngsters and potentially a new generation of, of Speedway lovers, if you like. Please welcome the current Speedway world champion. It's Ty Woffenden. <laughs> I think what he's done for Speedway generally, particularly in the UK, has been magnificent. He was born in Scunthorpe, and we lived in Scunthorpe. We got married in Scunthorpe. And when he was um, about six months, we went to Australia for a holiday because my husband used to race Speedway, so he was racing in Australia. And um, just before he started school, we, we talked about, you know, we should maybe make a move over there because it would be better life for him. And the weather, of course, attracted us. And so we thought, yeah, let's give it a go. <laughs> Should we go down beach time? Yeah. Watch the sunset? Yeah. So we can show everybody at home? Yeah. Okay. Childhood was great. We used to go surfing before school and then go straight to school with all our weddies and stuff, chuck them in a locker, pick them up after school, go for another surf or go home, drop it off and get yeah, BMX bikes out and shovel and go shovel some dirt and, and make some jumps in the bush. a different way of life, different upbringing, it's, it's amazing. He was into everything, he used to scare me a lot. 
first it was skateboards, skateboards were a big thing for him, and then it was the BMX bike, and then it was the surfboard, and then it was everything, and then he got a motocross bike, and there was just always something, constantly always something, and he was doing taekwondo, football, you name it, he did it. It just seemed to be a natural at everything. The first time he got on a skateboard, he was, you know, going down the biggest hills and doing the biggest jumps. And it's like he had no fear. He was a daredevil. Take a look at the bruise on that. <laughs> oh, it's like, take a picture, Mum, take a picture. It actually was worse than that picture. I just launched it as high as the roof, over the bars, and just front wheel. Oh, oh, a big crash. That's good bruise. The doctor said I was like, half an inch from puncturing my lung. If we went to a party, we'd take Ty to the party. If we went to the speedway, we'd take him to the speedway. Everywhere, we, everything we did, he was always there. So he was always around the adults. And um, I think that made him grow up a little bit quicker than maybe he should have done. School for me was tough. I wasn't the smartest kid in my school. And uh, yeah, it just got harder as the years went on and I started rebelling and not wanting to be there. He wasn't academic, let's put it that way. Not interested in school one bit. When he was younger, you hear people say, oh, you know, you want to stay at school, we wish we were still back at school. And when I was younger, I was like, nah, whatever. And now I kind of look back and think, yeah, I know what they were talking about. The teacher said, you know, it's typical, you'll never become anything, Ty, you know, that kind of thing. Remember her name and everything, Ty never did like her. <laughs> Pretty much every teacher said I was going to be nothing and, um, yeah just proved them all wrong, which is great. Probably when he was like nine or ten, he had a motocross bike. And then um, he'd seen a, a speedway bike at a friend's house and he wanted to have a go. So his dad let him have a go, reluctantly actually. Constructed the phone and I don't really get him into speedway. But um, it I loved it. Dad goes, oh, we can't really afford to do both. So um, I said, oh, I'll get rid of the motocross bike and let's go with that. Ty liked a bit of motocross liked his push bike, um, but Rob gave him the chance. He gave him the platform to become a speedway rider, and that is what Rob Woffenden did for his son. And he was like showing me lines and stuff and teaching me how to do the dive bomb and cut back on people. Uh, and they said, if we go to England, you can make a job out of it, and yeah, we just, we did it. And parents packed up everything and, and we left. For us, it was an adventure, for all three of us. We were a bit tight on cash. So if it weren't for, for his grandma and other people helping us, I don't, I don't know where we would have been, really. They pretty much you know, sacrificed everything to give me a, a shot at becoming a professional speedway rider, which was you know, amazing. How do you, how do you thank your parents for that? It's, it's, it's nearly impossible, you know? The first two years, Scunthorpe, he was just winning everything. And, and the team, they won the Conference League Riders' Championships, and they, were, they was just winning everything. It just was a roller coaster. I felt like I was riding good, and I, was in, I knew I was at the bottom of the sport, but you know, I felt confident, I felt, you know, I can go all the way here. I wanted a tattoo, and I was, they were like, oh, you can't have a tattoo. You can only have a tattoo if you have a good season. And the first year, I had a really good season, and um, they thought I was going to have a tough year and had a really good one. And, Got my first tattoo, which was funny. Oh, it's been a few years now establishing these tattoos and the ear stretchers and everything. And, you know, I have my opinion. I'm like, Ty, don't do it. Don't do any more. Don't go above here. Don't go on your hands. It's my body, Mum, and I'll do what I like. OK. My mum didn't want me to get tattoos, so she goes, don't go above your collar. You know, always do it so you can wear a T-shirt and cover it up. So I used to have them stop at my wrists and stop at my neck. And I was like, nah, it looks sick. I want to get more. Yeah, my dad's a good mate. It was fantastic, really. It was, they really were good friends. It, it was, sometimes you go into the pits, especially when the kids are starting and the fathers are there constantly to help the kids, you know, progress. And the falling out with the fathers and the fighting and there's rows. You see a lot of fathers and sons and they're like, you know, at the races and their sons are shouting at their dads and effing and blinding and it's just like, I just look at them and think how like disrespectful to swear at, you, swear at your parents. But Rob and Ty, they'd never had a cross word. It was just, they both had respect for each other. They both knew, you know, what was what and it was, it, they were really, really good relationship they had. 
my dad broke his femur when he was um, when he was racing. He had an operation to lengthen it, so he always had it was shorter, so he always had a limp. And then when he had the operation to lengthen it, you know, probably six six to eight months down the line, you know, he, put, he had a really bad back, and he thought that the bad back was because he's had his leg lengthened. So um, he just left it and you know kept getting on with it. Eventually he went to the hospital to get a check up and they did a blood test and, uh, and he was diagnosed with cancer. He had a backache and he went to the doctors and the next day they said you've got six months to live. It was like that. My dad obviously wanted to tell me about it and um, sat me down in, in my bedroom and um, yeah he told me about it and he said you know I'm, it's, it's, they can't fix it, they, can, they might be able to slow it down but they can't, they can't get rid of it. Um, They've, they've given me until Christmas. Well, I was all devastated, you know, obviously. Um, I remember telling Ty and we both hugged and, and I cried, you know, together. And we were, we were really sad that we knew we weren't going to be seeing Ty progress to where he is now, you know. That year was tough, you know. It was one of the hardest times of my life, but at the end of the day I had I had until January 2010 to spend with him and you know do things and, and you know really make the most of what time we had left. We lost him in the end of January in 2010 uh, was the first year of the GPs and it didn't go well. It didn't go well at all. But I remember his dad saying at the time before he died, "You're not ready for the GPs time. It's not your time yet." He was nowhere near ready, uh, physically, mentally, mechanically. Experience-wise, ability-wise, you know, you just weren't there in any of those departments, and you know, we all see what the result of that was. I did O10. I got offered a wild card. Dad said, "Don't do it," and I kind of was like, "Well, you know, the, all these years have just gone up, up, up. You know, O10 will probably do the same," um, and it didn't. And Dad wasn't there, and. I had problems with my tuna and problems in the in the in the in the team with the mechanics and, and whatnot and it all just got a bit too out of control. We went back to Australia that that uh, winter after that season, and um, of course you know we're going back to the home what Robert built for us over there, and um, it was the first time I'd seen Ty break down about his father and. Um, and I think it was good for him to get it out of his system. I had a bit of a breakdown because I was always there for my mum. You know, I didn't want my mum to, to ever be upset, so I was always the, the rock for her to lean on. Um, and that kind of got to me. I never really mourned his death. It was just, you know, put on a brave face and, you know, you go to the track and everyone's, oh, you're all right, you're all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, thanks, I'm good. You know, you just kind of bottled it up and, and focused on your racing. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, got back to Aussie and I was like, you know, I don't really want to do Speedway anymore. It doesn't feel the same without him. In fact, he was considering quitting. Yeah, he was like, I've had enough, I can't do it anymore. I lost my best mate and my dad, which was you know, one of the hardest things. What Ty had to go through then, um, I wouldn't have blamed him if it made him a very angry young man, a very bitter young man. Um, he went back to Australia and gathered his thoughts and, and Look how he's come back, he's dealt with it and you know I know he's got a tattoo of a, uh, of a note that his father wrote him and, and you know I can only imagine what, it, what he must have been going through um, and full credit to him for, for bouncing back and doing all this. Ty, I love you heaps. You have been a mega son for me. I have enjoyed every minute with you. I have tried to take you everywhere with me. We've had some wicked times together. I don't know how bad I am, but I must be getting close to the end. I seem to be really struggling to breathe. When you get down a bit, just sit down and have a minute thinking about something that we did together. I'm sure you'll find a giggle or two if you look back. It's been amazing, no one can take this away from us. I will write more tomorrow as I think.
and when you get to like October and November, it's, it's pretty tough to, to keep going, but you just dig deep and do what you can. That's, uh, that's what we have to do though, you know. Speedway is not a long career and you've got to try and I guess make as much money as you can while you can and it don't come by easy. Look at MotoGP riders and um, Formula One drivers and all that kind of thing. They're on stupid money, you know. I'd love for Speedway to be like that, but it's not. So you just, uh, you know, make adjustments where it needs to be done. You feel fatigued when you're riding pretty much every day. But what do you do? You just deal with it and get on with it. There'll be a certain point of the year where a lot of riders will start crashing. And that's just because you're so fatigued and so tired. Ain't as glamorous as everyone thinks it is. Yeah, you think people would be surprised? Yeah, I think they'll be shocked. You love what you're doing, and you know you'd never you'd never change it. But it's hard to be professional because you're so busy and you just don't have time. Seven thirty Tuesday morning. Just got back from Poland. Um, had a bit of a tough one, but yeah, new day today. And we're at Wolverhampton. Flew here this morning. I was up at like three thirty to get back here. I had um, Poland yesterday. We're at Wolverhampton today. Um, Kings in tomorrow. Uh, flight of the Grand Prix Thursday. Practice Friday. Grand Prix Saturday. Nothing Sunday. Got a day off Sunday. Yeah. Um, and then Wolves Monday, Sweden Tuesday. We'll see how this weather is. Welcome back to England. Okay, we'll head off now and um, you boys are driving so I can get a few hours sleep. Just got here at P. Adams' house from Poland via Luton and Coventry, so a bit of a mission, but we're here now and uh, can have five minutes to myself and catch up on a bit of sleep. Welcome to Brookhouse, um, madhouse, animal sanctuary, um, home of wayward speedway riders. I'm just chief cook, bottle washer, um, dog's body, landlady, whatever they want me to be. As long as I'm here, I don't mind providing food, bed, washing, a shoulder to cry on, whatever it might be. It's hard for them, isn't it? There's no place really they can call home, you know, it's a transient life, isn't it? But they seem to cope with it. He's definitely has matured and grown up and uh, he's had to really. He's had to, perhaps sooner than he'd have liked. You know, it's been difficult for him as well. Um, and I think he's done incredibly well and I hope he carries on doing so. So yeah, you know, everybody's there for him. I'm not going tonight. I've got a pile of ironing to do. <laughs> so I'll watch them while I'm uh, doing my domestics. Yeah. Do you you girls do that? <laughs> <laughs>
long day, 19 hours since I, since I woke up. I'm definitely motivated enough, just going to try and figure a few little things out and uh, be a bit more consistent with my, with my point scoring and um, yeah, we'll see where it takes us at the end of the year. meeting in three days so um, yeah it seems tiring but I feel pretty good at the moment so yeah looking forward to getting on with it. I'm the man Ron at number one needs no introduction he is the world champion the British number one and the GB captain let's hear it for Ty Wuffender. <laughs> It's not good. We don't know what, what what's happened exactly. Yeah? What's your overall feelings right now? It's pretty low, but um, you know I'll sort it out. It used to get about meetings like this, which has been every meeting this year. <laughs> but it will get better. Trip down to Stansted now and uh, have a good night's sleep, and we'll start all again. more driving and more hotels and <laughs> trying to catch up on more sleep but hey that's what it is and I'm loving every minute of it. Yeah man. Yeah I didn't expect that. Just got in bed. I think it's about 12.30. This is how we do it. <laughs> See you later. Getting a bit tired, might have a sleep. See you on the other side. This is a great racing track. This is probably one of the best Grand Prix as far as racing is concerned. I'm just going to start banging in as many points as I can because uh, points make prizes at the end of the year. Just keep pushing, keep trying to find speed and, and keep going fast as you can.
very bad night. Um, rode three different bikes and um, just haven't got one that's working, you know. I've, I feel pretty, because I know how good I can ride. And when you haven't got something underneath you that lets you do that, then you're just nowhere, as you can see. And hopefully we um, hopefully we go all right on Monday. New day. Um, tough again, but um, yeah, we'll sort it out, mate. It's just, yeah, I don't even know what to say. You know, I, I know I can do it, and when we've got everything right, when, you know, when we've got all the pieces to the puzzle, I'll be, I'll be quick. Back at the airport, it's um, 4.30 Tuesday morning. Um, got to sleep about one o'clock last night at the hotel and um, yeah, that's about a week finished. We're off to Sweden now and the life of a speedway rider, which nobody actually really understands. <laughs> we've covered some miles, we've, we've flown some planes, lots of hotels and yeah, that's a week done and one down and God knows how many to go. The majority of people know by now that my father passed away in January 2010 from cancer. You know, when I watched my dad, you know, deteriorate and get sick and, you know, imagine, it, it, I think it's different for an adult to go through it and then a kid go through it. For a kid it must be so hard and, you know, if I can raise some money to, to help him get through it or, you know, just do it, anything we can, you know, this is going to be my charity forever now and, you know, we've got to make sure the kids are feeling good. What's that you got? Oh. Have you? I've got a bike as well. <laughs> oh. Ty is really fantastic with the children. It's not always easy, but uh, there's lots of people here that have been really eager to meet with him, and um, yeah, he, he's, he's been having great fun with the kids and really brightening up their days um, when they're going through a really tough time. Come on then, show us where your room is. <laughs> What's all this? Um, Have you made some? Yeah. Are you going to make me one? No. Why not? Because it's a bit tricky. <laughs> oh. well, yeah. She had a transplant two weeks ago. So. She's getting on alright? Yeah, yeah, she's doing yeah. well. Yeah. Tell me one more cuddle. One more cuddle. She's happy, she's smiling, she's having a, having a laugh and you know you see people, oh I'm going to have a couple of days off work so I've got man flu, you know, people need to wake up and smell the roses and uh, you know maybe come here for a day and visit the kids and see how everyone does it here. Over the last 10 years we've probably helped uh, in the region of three or 400 riders. Last year we had approximately 50 riders who were beneficiaries of the BEM Fund. Plus we have 10 paraplegic riders here in the UK. They put their all into our sport and uh, you know, we, the sport's giving them something back. 
and as you see we've got the full British team out today which is fantastic. If a rider gets injured then they help pay for operations or you know whatever it takes to get the rider back racing so it's good that all the boys have turned up and, and done their bit for the, for the cause. When we look at today it's absolutely packed and I think some of that must be the Ty Wiffenden effect. I think it's great for the sport, great for Speedway and I think you'll see continue to see the insurgents in the UK. I'm racing a motorbike with no brakes. Um, I've accepted the fact that I could go out for a race and, and be paralysed. I could go out and you know break my arms, break my legs, you know maybe even pass away. And, and I've accepted the fact if that happened, then it happens. Oh my God, it's it's the worst feeling. Is I just the blood drain, drains from me. I just go white and you know I'm scared and I just pray instantly pray. Oh, Please be alright, please be alright. It's just a horrible thing to have to, to see. Broken tibia, fibia, six broken collarbones, broken scaphoid, broken hands, broken fingers. Every time you put the helmet on, I was fearful, and still am. I, um, I do, I get nervous. I, I do watch him, I do watch him race. A lot of, pe a lot of mums can't watch their sons race, so, but I do watch him, but I'm, yeah, I'm really nervous. He's got no fear. I think he genuinely just goes on the bike, he shows a good level head, a good attitude, um, a sensible attitude on the bike, and he's just fearless, and I think that's what you have to have as a speedway rider. You've got your brain and your spinal cord, and that's like the two main things which like run your body. Your spinal cord is like a tiny little tube, and every, you, know, you break that and you're paralysed. I've seen a lot of um, you know, horrific crashes as well, um, which are nice, but when that's what they want to do, you've just got to support them and yeah, that's, and that's motorbike racing, isn't it? As long as he stays clear of injury, uh, then I believe he can go on and, uh, and become one of the greatest ever riders. Winning a world championship's hard, but retaining it's the hardest thing ever. I've worked hard to get to where I am now, so... I guess there was some luck on the way, you know, but I think you make your own luck in life. I'm just kind of learning as I go. Um, you know, a few years ago I was at school and now I'm up the top. I feel like I'm still having fun. And I think the day that I stop thinking that is the, the day that I retire. If you know, tomorrow came around the corner and that was it, you know, career over, I'd be, I'd be pleased with what I've done, you know. I've, I've, I've reached the pinnacle of the sport. Um, it doesn't get any better, you know. To be honest, my life's pretty much one big holiday. I, you know, I'm getting paid to do something I love and, you know, it doesn't get any better than that, really. I'm living the dream. That's, I'm not doing anything else apart from living the dream. It's not a job, it's, it's not going to work. I'm going to have fun ra and race a motorbike and get paid for it. Watch all six Sky Sports channels on your mobile and online.